Virginia Tech around the corner for Syracuse. I'm willing to say it. It is becoming uh, a little bit of the most important part of the year. They need to kick it into high gear right now and start trampling some opponents that maybe people don't expect them to beat, and that starts with Virginia Tech. We're going to preview that game, tell you everything you need to know about it. It's on Locked On Syracuse, and it's right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine with you on your Wednesday episode of Locked On Syracuse. Thanks for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And today we're talking Virginia Tech as Syracuse basketball will take on the Hokies uh, on the home floor for its next game. First home game since or first home game of the new year as the last one was. New Year's Eve against Boston College. That was a 79-65 win. Since then, a one-point win at Louisville and a closer-than-expected loss at John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville, Virginia, to the Cavaliers. Now the Hokies of Virginia Tech come up to Syracuse uh, to face the Orange. Uh, and Syracuse currently 10-6 and on the season. They haven't exactly... You know, it's kind of difficult to say whether or not they've exceeded expectations because everybody's expectations were kind of all over the map and a lot of people didn't know what to expect. So this year has honestly been a year of you're going to get what you get and you're going to hope it turns out really, really good. Um, And it has probably been less than that. Uh, Benny Williams did not play last game. He had an illness that was non-COVID. Jesse Edwards pretty much might as well have not played. He only shot the ball five times and Joe Girard shot the ball poorly from everything that wasn't three. Uh, So this is a game where, I don't know, you're coming back home. The home crowd is going to help you out. This could be the start uh, of some really hard-fought battles for Syracuse because, like we've said before, uh, you know, it gets really tough from here. I mean, Virginia Tech is a tough team. Then you have Notre Dame, which is not as tough. But then it's Miami who's been playing a really, really tight uh, ship this year. Uh, and then a couple games later, you've got North Carolina, who started the year as the number one team in the country. Then you're back at Virginia Tech. Then you host Virginia. So there's a lot of really strong basketball coming Syracuse's way. Uh, and this game against Virginia Tech could you know, help set the tone for the guys. Definitely. This is a, a game that I think sets a ship uh, in the right or wrong direction for Syracuse. It's, it's a really good opportunity to prove themselves and win one of those true toss-up games, or not quite true toss-up games, but one of those very winnable games against ACC teams that are technically better than you. Uh, But this is one of the more winnable ones. It's a home game uh, and a really good opportunity for Syracuse to to get on track, as we talked about. This is a tough stretch for them, playing some quality opponents. And, you know, unfortunately for Syracuse, or maybe fortunately, uh, depending on how you want to look at it, a Virginia Tech team that's struggling at the moment and has had quite the skid um, in the new year and even leading into the new year, right? They haven't won a game in almost a month. Their last win was December 17th against Grambling State. So they have lost their last four. This is a struggling team, uh, injuries and, and, you know, having to change lineups and a lot of things for this Virginia Tech team. Uh, You could say that's really good in that it's a team that's struggling, not really sure what's going on, a lot of wheels falling off almost. But at the same time, it's a team that's lost four straight. And they are looking at Syracuse right now saying, all right, Syracuse is a very winnable game for us. This is a game that we're supposed to win, right? Ken Palm's got them favored by two, even on the road. Um, And this is also a game that they've got Syracuse leading up to a trio of games that are are very difficult, right? Next on the docket for them is Virginia. Then they've got a Clemson team that's undefeated in the ACC right now and just beat them about a week ago. And then they play Duke, uh, who is uh, a formidable foe as always. Not as dominant as maybe they have been in the past, but obviously a tough game. So the trio of games following Syracuse are a disaster uh, and very, very difficult. And so I think if you're Virginia Tech, you're looking at this game like, all right, here's our chance to, 
to try and get back on track, to try and get going again, to try and settle things down. And Syracuse is the opportunity to do that because they've lost four straight and they're playing three games that are very difficult. I would assume if you're a Virginia Tech fan, you probably chalk that up as a one and two stretch. Uh, and the one win is a toss up. That Clemson game uh, would probably be a toss up. You drop this game to Syracuse, that is a very real possibility of an eight game losing streak in ACC play for Virginia Tech. So this game means absolutely everything to them uh, in terms of outcome and putting some green color on a Ken Palm page that is recently littered with red. And you mentioned how last few games they've been dealing with injury. They've had to try out different lineups. Uh, That's because the guy who uh, was a superstar in the ACC tournament last year uh, that basically, I mean, felt like single-handedly beat or beat it, beat Duke in the final it was Hunter Couture, and he's been injured uh, recently. But I think he is going to play in this game against Syracuse, so uh, they're not entirely out of the woods. Um, I want to get some confirmation on that. So I'm not just spewing anecdotal information, but uh, that I believe that's what I saw on Twitter. Um, but that does make it the more difficult for Syracuse because that guy, I mean, he doesn't put up the most statistics – Uh, But he is, I feel like, the heart and soul of that team at times. Um, And he's a veteran on that team that doesn't have a ton of them. I mean, their highest scorer is a second-year player in Sean Padula, who puts up nearly 20 a game. So um, a lot of their scoring coming from youngsters. Is Couture playing? I don't know. I'm still looking into it. I saw uh, the big news in terms of Virginia Tech was yesterday uh, it was announced that Rodney Rice uh, is expected to make his Virginia Tech debut um, in this game, uh, which I, I I don't know 100% what that means, but in terms of impact, in terms of how much he will play, uh, but this is a top 100 prospect uh, in the 22 class uh, who got hurt pretty much right when he got there uh, in August in preseason. So this is the return. Uh, I don't know what kind of role you can expect from him, but I know that'll be interesting, right? Maybe a spark for a team that struggled a little bit. So that is something that I'm sure is going to be definitely a wild card factor in this game, right? A guy that you're going to try and game plan for in some capacity or be aware of in some capacity. And all you've got on him is what, some high school footage? some hoop mixtapes yeah, from when he was at school, yeah. uh, not very easy to game plan. So depending on, you know, the role he ends up playing, the number of minutes uh, he's available, expected to play in this game and make his debut. And, you know, guys can make splashes in their debuts. And that's something that, you know, I feel like would be a very fitting ship for a guy to play his first game midway through the season against Syracuse and have that career day uh, where he just goes lights out from three, which seems like, that's what happens when you play Syracuse. So hopefully that's not the case, but uh, some variables definitely at play in this game on the VT sideline as well. Um, and just to confirm, a Mike Waters tweet does say that Mike Young, the coach of Virginia Tech, said Hunter Couture will be a game-time decision uh, for Syracuse on Wednesday. So not entirely confirmed there. You got to uh, hope no, no. he's yeah. hurt you for another hope night. He's... Hope he's hurt well, for one more night. I was going to say, if you're Virginia Tech, you've got to hope he can play. Um, and they, they yeah, definitely want to play. Um, but, uh, all right, let's take a quick break. And on the other side, we will continue this preview. But first, let me tell you about betonline.net. It's your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season to basketball. It's all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, they've got those too. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Okay, back here on Locked On Syracuse, Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine with you. Um, I mean, this is a game, If you, we've set the scene a little bit, um, but I want to talk about on the Syracuse side just a little bit more because they're at a really interesting point in the season now where 
We've almost hit the midway mark. Or have we hit the midway mark? I feel like we're at least close if we haven't already. Um, and you still, I mean, it feels like this is the deepest. I don't know. This is the deepest into a season I think I can remember where I still don't feel 100% about who's starting right now. You know? Like, maybe actually that's not true because at the end of 21, I thought Jesse should have started. But still. So far into the year, and there are still still so many stones left unturned, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and we don't really know what you can get out of certain guys. Uh, and Malik Brown just played 36 minutes after playing like four. Like, is he going to play more? Um, there's just still so many question marks so late into the year, uh, in a year where you're not terrible. I mean, you're 10 and six right now. There's still it's still a salvageable season. Um, I don't know, Owen. How do you feel about the year compared to how you felt about uh, the team going in? I want, I want like an update on how you feel about the team. Well, I mean, obviously, it's it's taken quite a hit because I think I now hindsight idiotically said this team has an elite eight ceiling, uh, which oh boy, some takes aged incredibly terribly, uh, and, and that's that one, one of them. Um, but this is. It's a team right now, obviously, that's dipped in expectations. But it's it's a team that has shown some promise at times. Uh, and maybe not even as a complete unit yet. Um, it's a team that's had individuals that show promise at times. And there's going to be a day where things work and people are working on the same day. Right? And I don't, I don't think we've truly seen that yet. And so that day, whenever it is here, if it gets here, this is a team that could could you know upset some teams or, or have some fun and, and make some noise. Uh, but you got to get guys clicking right now. And, and the issue is you've got guys that are clicking when nobody else is, which is nice to be able to keep you alive in certain games. But there are a lot of games where Gerard's the only one scoring, or a game where you know Gerard's not scoring and Mintz is the one, or you need that next tier of scoring. Uh, and it hasn't really been there except for the occasional flash in the pan game. I think there's going to be a point in the season, right? There's 15 games left. They're just over the midway point. 15 games left. I think you can assume in 15 games, there's probably going to be an instance where the team clicks in terms of people on at the same time. Yeah, we've got to see that at some point, right? Like, it, it right? has to show up. There's always a time in Syracuse's bas- in Syracuse basketball seasons where you're like, okay, where was this all year kind of thing. Yes. Uh, it it's usually game, happens right? late you're in the season. And you're like, wow, this team looks better than I've ever seen it play, but now it's too little too late or something of the like. Um, so I definitely think you're right about that. Just expectation-wise at the moment, I, I don't know. They're not dead in terms of the NCAA tournament, but there's there's not much that's keeping them from there. Um, and a, a loss, right? We look at the remaining schedule in terms of quad opponents and things like that, right? It's a quad two home game. You want to win quad two games. You're going to need to string together some quad two, some quad one wins uh, to develop any sort of resume, right? You're – comfortably outside the top 100 in terms of the net right now. Uh, You're at 90 in Ken Palm right now, right? You've got to start the window for recovery. The window for redemption is shutting quickly. And when that window closes, it locks itself up and you have no, uh, you don't have any way to break down that window. It's bulletproof. It's real thick. You're not getting back in, Uh, but it's closing pretty quickly. So you've got to start to show some sort of promise uh, in this game, honestly, that the window could be as short as this game uh, in terms of the tournament, unless you've got a 14-game win streak in your back pocket after dropping this game. Yeah, and I was just looking at uh, Bet Online, is uh, our wonderful sponsor has dropped the the line is plus two uh, for Virginia Tech in this game. Um, or plus two for Syracuse. Hold on, wait, now I got to find it again. Um, I would assume Syracuse is getting two, and Virginia Tech is favored. Syracuse plus two. Virginia Tech. Is okay. Favored. Yeah. Um. Sorry, I misspoke the first time. 
Um, I mean, yeah, that's expected. Honestly, the Virginia Tech is such a weird team this year because I don't know about you, but I feel like I felt I heard the hype around that team. Uh, and then the, these four conference games that they've played, they've dropped them all, and that's kind of entirely dissipated. But, yeah. you know, Ken Palm still has them at 42nd in the country, and uh, the net ranking has them at 50. So they would be one of the best teams Syracuse has played all season long, yet this game still doesn't have that feel to it, you know? Like, yeah. instead of me thinking, wow, they're going to about to play the 42nd best team in the country or 50, 50th best team in the country, I'm thinking you're about to play a team that just lost four straight games in conference, one of which to Boston College, which they lost in overtime, who Syracuse beat. So, honestly, I feel better than the numbers show, but as, you know, time and history have shown us, the numbers are usually right about these things. Uh, yet, I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll find out how good uh, Virginia Tech actually is, but it's going to take a huge game from a couple of guys. And, and like you said, Owen, some guys are going to have to work on the same night. And – that's kind of been SU's MO for a couple of years now. I mean, remember when the conversation was surrounding Joe, Buddy, and Elijah Hughes? They just yeah. never got it going on the same night. It was one of them goes off, two of them went off, but they never got going, all three of them, uh, and were ever to, able to put out a huge scoring output, which would have you know, put them ahead of a lot of teams. Um, this year, that same thing is with Joe and uh, Jesse and Judah. Can they all get going at the same time? Jesse has been, uh, you know, missing in action for the entirety of conference play, bar that Notre Dame game uh, that came earlier in the season, which he had 22 points. Um, over the last four games he's played, he's averaging eight and a half points a game, which for a senior center who has made such great strides and a huge leap last season and this season, that's just not going to cut it. Uh, and for Joe, He's got to hit threes. He did in the last game, but one for eight inside, that's not going to cut it. Uh, so if this team is going to show us that it has any kind of tournament, tournament capabilities, it's going to have to turn it around, and those guys are going to have to work together. Yeah, I mean, you look back three weeks ago in terms of the NCAA rankings, right, and, and the top 25 um, in terms of the AP Virginia Tech was 21 in the coaches poll. They were 20 to go back to your point before you started talking about uh, scoring and whatnot, right? This is a team that was 11 and one and was climbing pretty rapidly uh, and, and winning games and has quality wins under their belt. I mean, a neutral site win against Penn state was not bad. A home win against North Carolina, uh, a neutral site against Oklahoma state, right? They've got decent wins. Um, and a couple of other ones mixed in that are, are decent. But this four-game skid has sort of come out of nowhere. Uh, and it's it's correlated pretty closely with a Couture injury and Couture not playing. Um, but this is a team that, right, I, I think if we were playing them right before the new year, there is a lot different of a hype and a murmur and a worry about this game. And now, not that we're not worried or nervous about Virginia Tech's ability to beat Syracuse because they very much can and per, you know, the spread should, uh, by a slight margin, win this game. It's not the same game as it would have been three weeks ago. So that's that's definitely a recent shift uh, and, and something that, you know, if game time decision means that he plays, right, this might be back to – that team from three weeks ago that was a top 25 team in the country and playing at a really high level. Uh, sure. So that is something that I think you should be worried about if you're Syracuse, but in terms of scoring and to get to your other point here, right? You, you want to see, you've got three guys that can score in mints in Gerard in Jesse, Judah, Joe, Jesse, your three J's. Um, you've got two guys that have been playing better than the other in that trio, right? Joe and Judah have been scoring at a much better rate uh, than Jesse has. Jesse obviously has struggled. We talked about um, his points per game in the last, I think four or five game stretches dipped by five points. Yeah. Uh, maybe even more. I think it was six points. Uh, so you need Jesse to sort of figure some things out down low. You need Joe and Judah to score their 15 ish. And you need one more. And 
is it Whether Malik it's Brown? Bell or Bill Benny De- or Brown, it it's Benny? gotta be somebody. Yeah, who is it at this point? Uh and right, we always talk. There is Taylor a realistic possibility, right? There's five guys on the floor at a time. That my God, if two of these guys, say Bell and Taylor, or Bell and Malik Brown, or Malik and Justin Taylor, if any combo of those two play a decent game, you know, getting seven to twelve. I think Syracuse is in a really good spot to win this basketball game. If they come out flat, like we've seen them do many times, I don't think they can do it. Uh, And and Bell, if it is Bell, is going to have to offset the number of rebounding, you know, the the rebounding drop-off that coincides with his minutes. Um, Because it is a disaster. And I, I forget who it is, but I know there's a fan page on Twitter uh, that likes to look into what happens in terms of score before Chris Bell gets subbed out. Oh, really? I haven't seen that. Um, or it might have just been this last Virginia game. And, and I think it might have been a 23 to 1 difference in the two halves before he got subbed out. Bell did play a decent last five minutes against Virginia, hit a three and a a decent bucket as well. But the rebounding hurts, and the defensive issues hurt. Uh, And I do think there's a lot of merit and benefit from, you know, it not being him at this point if he can't score. And the scoring is not at the point that it needs to be. And I would love to see a switch up. I think Malik Brown deserves 30 minutes in this game or 25 minutes if Benny's back, right? Malik Brown deserves 20 to 25 minutes in this basketball game Uh, with the fight that he's shown, with the spark he continues to bring, um, being able to, as you said, uh, the last episode we were on together, being able to create, right? Syracuse struggles to create for yourself and create individually uh, and, and be able to find your own shot. And he is a guy that, you know, brings an elevated level of that in comparison to, you know, some of the other forward spots right now. And I think that will go a long way in Syracuse's offensive success. And Malik Brown rebounds the best of the three in terms of Bell, Taylor, and himself, uh, which I think is something that, you know, you're still yearning for and still asking for is the Syracuse forwards to be holding their own in terms of rebounding. I don't think anyone's even asking for a dominant rebounding, just holding their own, really. And that's something that you haven't seen and even remotely consistent enough of a clip this season. All right, let's get into some predictions. Like we said, Bet Online's got this game at Syracuse plus two. Um, for me, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be optimistic, I'm gonna be positive. I'm gonna say this is the game where the Orange turn it around and they show you something new and say, wow, this team might be able to do something. Some people might be like, wow, look at him making that huge mistake. Doesn't he know that this team is bad? Uh, And maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe I am making a mistake. I'm taking Syracuse to win this game. I'm taking them, obviously, to cover at that point. Uh, I'm saying SU beats Virginia Tech. It would be a little bit of an upset, even though it's on the home floor. I'm taking SU to win. I hate you. I wanted you to predict a Virginia Tech win so that I could come in as the positive (laughs) guy in this scenario that thinks things can work out. And now you've got us in this situation, Bones, where we're going to look like an idiot podcast as a duo. Because I I feel like this seems like a game Syracuse can win. Uh, I know I sort of hyped it up in terms of stakes as something where Virginia needs or Virginia Tech needs this game and will elevate to that level. I don't know. I, I like Syracuse in this game. I, I think if Benny's back, uh, building off of a really nice late run and some re- late life and spark from that Virginia game, I think this is a game and a situation and a matchup that might favor Syracuse decently well. Uh, Not to be, and I know I am a lot of times, hopelessly optimistic, but this does seem like a game that could work out well in Syracuse's favor and and be effective, and and they can really do their thing. They're going to have to be active defensively. 
that's going to be a key. There are some guys on this VT team that can shoot the three ball decently well. Uh, you got what? How many guys? Yet, you, you know, Couture is over forty percent. Um, and we know he can turn it on. Almost seventy against Duke last year yeah. in the tournament. Uh huh. Well, almost seventy three point attempts at this point, still shooting over forty percent. Uh, you got Dustin Mutz, who is, doesn't shoot the ball a ton from three, but is nearly fifty percent. Uh, so far on the season. So really effective when he does. And as we've noticed watching the Syracuse defense play this year, uh, opposing teams get open threes. Uh, and that's a guy that makes you pay in terms of what happens when he throws the ball up. And then uh, the other two scorers, uh, is it Basile um, and, and Padula, both shoot 35 plus or in terms of percentage, 35% plus. Uh, so this is a team you're going to have to be active defensively. You're going to have to uh, be pretty solid, closing out on threes and, and making sure you limit the open looks that teams have gotten far too often. But this is a game that I'm not all too worried about interior stuff. And Virginia Tech being able to beat you size-wise on the inside I don't think is all too worrisome. And maybe I eat those words when we get on here for our next episode. But Lynn Kidd, at this point, is the tallest guy that they're going to rotate through. He's not all too effective on the inside. Um, and, and when you look at the team as a whole, right, they, they have some size. But in terms of height, I mean, they go 6'1", 6'4", 6'5", 6'7", and then Kidd at 6'10". Uh, so they don't really have – this giant team by any means, uh, but still six, nine. So a little bit of size there at the forward spot as well, but this is not a gigantic team, uh, which I, I think can help Syracuse if they can guard the three. Uh, I think Jesse can hold his own. We've seen Monir play solid defense um, in a handful of splashes lately when he's been called upon for various Jesse issues in terms of fouls or just utter struggles. Uh, he's been able to hold his own defensively. I don't think this is a game you get torched on the inside, but this is a game and ACC teams know how to attack the zone and Virginia, every time you play them puts on, you know, a, a masterclass of how to attack the zone. And that's the most recent footage VT has to access. So be aware, limit three point shots that are wide open. That sounds like low hanging fruit, but if they can hold their own uh, guarding the three, this is a Syracuse game that is very winnable. Uh, because of a lot of question marks for Virginia Tech. And we'll see. We'll see. We will indeed see. Um, all right. We both take a Syracuse win in this game. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear it. Uh, thanks for making Syracuse Locked on Syracuse your first listen every day as well as today. For your second listen, check out our brand new podcast, Locked on College Basketball. Experts Isaac Schott and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court, plus hear from the big-name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. I am Matt Bonaparte. He is Owen Valentine. You'll hear from us after the game uh, tomorrow, or actually hear from us. Well, I guess that's today. So you'll hear from us tomorrow morning about the game. Peace! Peace!